Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Weekly Games Chat. I am your host, Chris. As always, joined by my co-host, Sean. Hello, how is everybody? And looking out for me, John. Yeah, John. <laughs> oh, looking out for him, John. Yeah. John, let See, me that's a little second. pre-show stuff. Yeah. Seen was... Infinity War four times. Mm. I almost won again Sunday, but I did not. Have you seen it four times? Yes. Why? Tony. That was me shaking off my Richard. If you it heard was that. the only way. <laughs> <laughs> I read a terrible article about that movie this week, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> Tell me more. I'm kidding. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what I did? <clears throat> What'd you do? And it's funny that we were watching this. It started from the moment I from woke up. So last, you know, the the week before Saturday, I left my dog with Penny or my my dog Penny with John. Stayed the night at your house. There was a lot of um, Me Too movement action from what I've heard. That explains that um, smell. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. But I went and hung out with Jeff and we, we drank beers all day. And I woke up Sunday. I was very hurting but not as bad as i thought it was gonna hurt very surprised by that um but i came home and i always have a tradition when i come home from jeff's house is uh i usually watch snl from the night before which was great because donald glover was on right so i watched that second best episode i've probably seen this season i'm a huge snl guy the only one spared this year is john mulaney but I did that, and then all of a sudden he dropped his new music video, and that's blowing up everywhere. <clears throat> but I was kind of like in this Donald Glover zone, so I finally went back and finished this week uh, the second, watched the whole second season of Atlanta, <laughs> which I think is maybe the best comedy I've seen on TV lately. For folks who aren't woke, yeah, what is this about? What is Atlanta about in general? Is is it it's, a comedy show? Is it a yes. is it a dramedy? It's a dramedy. Okay. Yeah, drama. It's kind of like where does um, it take place? Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it, the best way is like it's a show about a guy like <clears throat> a hip hop artist trying to make it as a hip hop artist in Atlanta mm-hmm. without it actually being about him being a hip hop artist. Kind of like you know like those things like Veep, right? Like where Veep is about the vice presidency. But it's not actually like a lot of the focus on like her actually doing the things that Vice President so done. It's just, about all it's, the behind stuff it's just that goes about on. Trying to make it in the hip hop business is just kind yeah. of a backdrop. But really, the thing is, it's really kind of like a Twin Peaks show <clears throat> where like on any single episode, it's it anything can happen. You just don't know. Like, there's a really weird episode in this one that is a can, self-contained horror story <clears throat> that when weighs out. I was like, at first, I'm like. Oh, okay, I kind of think I know what you're going to do with this. And it went completely in a different way that was is equally horrifying and uh, satisfying in the end as far as a conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, the weird part about it, it was primarily an episode with, um, remember Get Out, right? Yeah, um, awesome movie. Okay, remember the guy who gets kidnapped at the beginning and then like shows up midway through and he's screaming? Yes, yes. He's, uh, he's one of the main characters on the show, okay. Darius. And uh, he's he's the main star of that episode. I mean, and it's, it's perfect. Atlanta is like the the sleeper show that everybody talks about. Yes. It doesn't it, it doesn't seem to get a lot of attention in the main airwaves. Award ways, yeah. I but, mean, but everybody I know is like, this show is legit. I mean, yeah. this is the first it's, show. It's like definitely and everybody I speak to is in their top five favorite shows, if not favorite show. Yeah. How do you check it out? Uh, you can watch it if you have FX now. <clears throat> and I think it might also still be on Hulu. Um, mm-hmm. But basically the first season is solid, but you know, you could see they were figuring out this season was really cool because there is a point to behind the whole entire season but you literally do not get it till the very, very end. And then like when you when I've sat right. back this week, like reflect, I'm like, Oh, they were talking about this, this, and this to get to this point at the very end. And it made sense. But every single story, you just have no idea what's going to happen. There's like cat Williams is in an episode this year and he's freaking perfect. Uh, do you want to know why I hate you? Why? Cause you sit back and reflect. I do. <laughs> I think like whenever sometimes just, he sits sometimes there and says, yeah, I get a piece of wood out <laughs> and a knife and I just whittle and I reflect I'm like, huh, me and Sean, we've had a good life. <laughs> Did you guys uh, do okay with Mother's Day? 
Yeah, I mean, hey, I did. Uh, we don't have much. If, if we were scoring on, on like on a scale of one to ten, you nailed it. Yeah, definitely a ten. I I I completely tanked it. Well, we know that. Uh, well, I actually, um, of course, I know about it because I know you in real life, RL. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I've heard of this, but but it's gonna be all right. I think so. To, yeah. To wrap up though. After I finished, are the you lineup, serious right now? I went back and I started <laughs> Is he watching. Serious? <laughs> I started watching because it had been forever and I forgot it's on Hulu. Uh, Community and which is also great. That's on Hulu. Yes, all all the seasons are now this on Hulu. Mother. And I've never seen Community. No. I love like I love that show Not one that. <laughs> because it's Donald Glover, completely different, you know, from how he is now. But two, it's Rick and Morty's creator before he did Rick and Morty. Hmm. And it's like interesting because like now that I've seen all freaking Morty that's that's out so far, I was like, oh wait, okay, I kind of see where like what part of that show is him, and I can see the same things that. Carried well, over. They, uh, I read that they promised uh, seventy five episodes. Seventy. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. seventy Get it episodes, right. and somewhere, somewhere, Chris mm-hmm. Hatchett orgasmed. Yeah, and somewhere. Jeff and me. Yeah. We all did. We met in the parking lot. I know, but, lot. but Chris Hatchett, you got to admit, he is the ultimate Rick and Morty fan. He can tell you what color. Oh, no. Why did you say what you just said? What, what I'd say? actually go with Jeff. Yeah. No, See, not really. You would be you would be amazed. The use, You know how I know useless information on Rocky? Mm-hmm. That's Chris Hatchett. We drove to Atlanta to visit the that, Rickmobile. That's an action. That's not knowledge. Yes. I don't think you understand Try how again. much we watch this. Try again. I don't think you understand. Oh, I'm sure he does too. I would I mean, actually. I'd be willing to bet that you everyone sit there and watch there. Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. You can't watch Rick and Morty with Chris, not you, but Chris Hatchett, because he gives you the show notes, sure. the commentary, the history, why he did this, why they said that, the story behind dialogue. It's insane. Yeah, some I, people I, just want to enjoy a show. Exactly. Yeah, I shut up and let much. you let you watch it. Then we'll talk about it afterwards. Everything's a contest with Chris Hatch. It's like his yeah. alter ego. He's got to beat him. Yeah. I don't know what that's all about. Can, can I talk now? Yeah, man. No one cares about you. No, you no, no one cares f- about community. <laughs> that almost. <laughs> you messed up. I didn't mess up. Don't do you, ever do you, come at community. Do you, no, I mean, we were. Are we good? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a D&D episode. You'd love it. <clears throat> I don't like D&D. You would love this episode. You'd laugh. <laughs> You would laugh hard. <laughs> I like Richard and Richard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I started watching Hannibal again. Ooh, I still need to watch the final season. I didn't watch it. That's why I started yeah. it over. As far as my Netflix or you know binge watching, I'm on Love <clears throat> season three. Mm. I talked to Chris about that the other day. I said, hey, love was, season yeah, three. It's love. She's yeah. in freaking community. I know. Come on. I'm like naming off people. No, no, it's not the fact Next that you're going back. Like, I love no, the soup. And I'm going to be like, what the? Joel McHale, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. He's got his own show on Netflix, too. Doom, doom. Yeah. It's not that community is a bad show, Chris. It mm-hmm. was that we had to go back to wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's why I hate you. <laughs> I love you. More. Uh, but also, yeah, you, what? Beat Saber. Because I don't think we'll ever do a topic on this. <clears throat> but if y'all want a VR. But uh, I don't have an Oculus. It's coming though, but it is coming yeah. to PSVR. You're um, right. <clears throat> there's a early access game called Beat Saber right now, and all you need to know is that you literally get to hold two lightsabers and hit um, things to beats of music, sure. and that's and it's amazing. That's what it is, and it is sure wonderful. And if you need a good workout program, it will give you that so, to you too. I bet Beat it Saber will. was not like code name for a pocket P. <laughs> <laughs> it was Beat not. <laughs> That would be called Beat Richard. Well, Beat Richard Saver or Richard Beat Saver or whatever you want to say. (laughs) Richard's Pocket. (laughs) Richard's Pocket. (laughs) Hot Pocket. Yeah, that's what I was going for. (laughs) I saw a uh, national championship trophy this week. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, so that was fun. Where? Uh, um, So locally, we have a college. Now they know where we live if you you say this. They already know where we live. They don't. They do. They're going to hack us. You know how many times he said it? Yeah, I know. He's not really good at protecting it. <laughs> He's all like, <laughs> he just goes, he goes like, hey, if you need some good yard care in Columbus, Georgia, <laughs> come on down. 
<laughs> you did do that. You did. You were like, remember? call Jimmy's lawn care. <laughs> yeah. He's got you covered down here in Columbus. <laughs> Jimmy's lawn care. Oh, my God. It's one of these days for me. Isn't it? This is going to be one of these days for me. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is like, yeah. Yeah, I can already feel it. It is. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with him? I don't know. <laughs> First of all, you know you two are like oil and vinegar. You cannot be together, like on the same team. But that's what I put on my sandwich, oil and vinegar. But it, you know, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. They don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've tried. I've tried many times. (laughs) It just doesn't work. Mm, But no, John, it was on uh, Mother's Day, actually, and I still scored a 10 on Mother's Day. Mm. (laughs) I, I had an event for three to four hours and still scored a 10 on Mother's Day. I thought we were talking about a championship trophy. I was trying to get down to the weeds of what trophy it was. Oh, it was the uh, it was the <laughs> national championship trophy for I believe men's tennis on a Division three level. So what school stuff? Huh? What school? Columbus State University. Where? In Where's Col- that at? In Columbus, Georgia. And where like is Columbus, Georgia? <laughs> in Georgia. <laughs> where <Earth>. is Georgia? <laughs> in ER. <laughs> ER. <laughs> But yeah, I got a call. Georgia, um, Russia, or <clears throat> yeah, Georgia, Europe. That's where we're at because our accents and stuff. Because Europe. But yeah, I got a call and it was like, "Hey, uh, we have a crisis. They won. They, they, I guess they didn't expect <clears throat> them to win. They're like, we won, and we want to have a big to do. Come do it. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, all right. And I got the pre blessing from the wife. She was like, he's your gonna, wife. He's gonna. I just said the wife. I'm, I'm. I don't care. I hear wife, and I just say your wife. You that's say wife. I, I activate. <laughs> and uh, it turned out to be pretty cool. And pretty, you pretty, pretty and pretty you cool. and you scored a ten on Mother's Day. Yeah, I scored a ten. Yeah. Well, uh, leading up to it, I like to make mm. sure that my wife, your wife, mm. see, um, she, she she she's very like she doesn't say things that she wants, and so when I when she says, "Hey, I like this," it's like he knows mental note immediately, or pull out the phone, put it in the in the notes for like the next thing that's coming up, whether it's like Christmas, Valentine's Day, birthday, whatever. So then I have a thing to go back with. Like, she had not really said anything for Mother's Day. So finally she did. And I got that kind of stuff, you know. Tinley made her a, uh, at school they made her a little plot. Of, made her some slime. <laughs> yeah, made some slime. Uh, made a little plant, right? Mm-hmm. And like, so at our house, Tinley and myself are like, as far as the at whole college football or collegiate thing goes. Yeah. We're like Alabama, right? Mm-hmm. And the other side of the house is like Auburn. Right. I don't know how that happens. Um, people in the United States understand that's a big rivalry. That's a big difference for you people in England. It's like Manchester City versus Manchester United. <laughs> for you They're people, like, no, it's not. Uh, for you not. people in England, yeah. Yeah. cover or, all the countries. Uh, <laughs> for you people in yeah, Australia, for, I, I should have said you soccer fans. It, yeah, or you know, it's it's like it's just a big big rivalry. For you Northerners, think uh, Redskins and Cowboys. Michigan, Ohio State type thing. They, they don't all, care about Michigan. They already Ohio know State. all that. No one outside of Michigan and Ohio State cares about this college is true. football. But anyway, so getting to the point, Packers at Bear. school, she she painted a pot to put a flower in. And in that pot, she's so sweet that, or around the pot, she, she drew like little Auburn logos and put love you, mommy, and stuff like that. So when you got that, like in your court of presents that are you, you're going to give to your spouse, you win automatically anyway. So I need to get me a cute You got to get you girl. one of those kids that can make you a flower pot <laughs> that can draw pretty stuff on it. Yeah, Aiden Aiden wasn't here that day. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Is it time to pivot? I mean, it could be getting close. We don't close. have to pivot. We can, we can, oh, I did I see Black we're... Panther too, finally. Really? You Only took pivot. I, I didn't know you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, he's the one person in yeah. the world. And did you enjoy it? If you didn't, you're racist. <laughs> you got to get ready to hit the button. Oh, okay. I'm ready. I didn't like it. Topic time, 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 time. <laughs> Everyone hates you. That was per- but. I, 625 million but people. But I do can, I do love the character Black Panther. He has always been a great character. So what he did in that movie for me, uh, he he catapulted himself probably into my top five. So I'm going to give you my top five real quick of my favorite Marvel characters at the moment. How about Char- characters? Ooh, characters, not movies? <laughs> yeah, not movies. Okay. Characters. So so for me, uh-huh. I've got Iron Man at number one, always and forever. 
Love that man. You are narcissistic. Wait, <laughs> I've got, it, depending on the day, I've got Captain America at two, right? Spider Man's at three. Mm-hmm. Black Panther's four. Oh. And then I think what elevated him to was in to number five. Mm-hmm. I just realized I have all guys up there. I don't know what that says about me, but sexist number five because of his reincarnation of his axe hammer was uh-huh. Thor. When he came back in like an Infinity War, spoilers. What? They don't know what he did. When I just <laughs> said when he came back in, oh, yeah. I'm just gonna say yeah. it was B A. Uh-huh. Dude, at this point, if you ain't seen like, know, Black Panther right? and Infinity War <laughs> and you're a nerd, what's wrong with you? <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't seen that movie. So, Me, yeah, no, your top five real quick, just off the dome like I just did. Not so much characters, but Josh and I were earlier this week talking about our favorite movies from the Marvel Universe. Um, and I'd have to ask you guys, okay, do we – do you consider Homecoming part of the Marvel Universe – even I though don't. it's a Sony. Movie. I know it's weird, right? Yeah. Like I consider Spider-Man part of the Marvel universe, but yeah. I don't know. John, how do you feel about that? The movie homecoming? Yeah. Yeah. I consider it part of the movie. Is oh, it officially part of the MU? I mean, yeah, yeah the events is. take place. It's just, well, then, it's made by Sony. And you, so, but so it has to be counted if it's official canon. Okay. Or movie well then, canon or whatever. my top five in no order would Cinematic be, universe. My top five in no order <laughs> is Black Panther, um, Iron Man, Avengers, uh, Winter Soldier oh, he's and talking Black about Panther. Heroes. Well, he said no, he, yeah. he said he spun it. To yeah, it's funny because Josh and I had had that conversation, so I was like, "These are fine." I guess hero wise, it'd probably be Captain America. Um, I mean, like, see, I'm I'm gonna be biased because I'm gonna think about the comics. I can't do that. That's um, too hard for you. Yeah, because I, I don't would, read. Comics. I would put like <laughs> just I would watch put some movies. I just watch some movies. I would have like <laughs> I doc- can't weed. <laughs> I wouldn't put like for instance like movie wise. I wouldn't put Doctor Strange in there. But comic see, he's like wise, number I six. I, no, from a from the movie, look, I love him because he's <laughs> he's the wizard. You know, he he does stuff with his time and things. You're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. I will say that uh whoop, 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 don't put your eggs in It me. was crazy that I still got this even though the like Black Panther just came out on DVD, right? Like was uh, it yesterday. Some people buy Blu-rays now. Well, yeah, I say I know <laughs> This guy's I, buying 4K. <laughs> I, I realized I just did something that my mom does when she's like it need, comes on on tape. Uh, yeah, it I, on need, tape I need yet? to tape that and I'm like I give her hell. I'm like, "Mom, it's a DVR." And True. I just say, "Hey, the DVD came out on <laughs> Oh my god. It's not yeah. 1999. <laughs> you don't have a PlayStation 2. <clears throat> But yeah, it, it was surprising knowing that that, I think I just watched it, what, Saturday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there were still people seeing it in the theater knowing that the DVD was dropping like this week. It's crazy that it's had that long of a run. So that's, that's I have a volumes. feeling it will be the highest grossing, <laughs> uh, February movie for a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. Until Black Panther 2. <laughs> well, what, if, what, if, if it they drops release in February, then, yeah. yeah they what may what trips me out then. is I, I started in the movie theaters, um, I, I, my, when Titanic was out, like the week Titanic came out, Ooh, James Cameron. So I saw the the rush, the craziness of like people literally coming daily to see this three and a half hour movie, right? Yeah, and it's crazy to see now that as as these new movies come out, and they make more and more money, but there's less people there. Yeah, and it, it's, it's crazy less. to see those lists that show the all time like this and this and this and the one you should do is go to the box office mojo yeah. one day and look at the adjusted for yeah, inflation for inflation yeah it's like crazy gone with the wind blows everyone Still. away yeah by a mile i got a fun fact about that movie real quick fun John, fact. giving you a little bit more time to give me your top five marvel universe <laughs> oh, i didn't know okay. i was, I was, yeah, I was gonna, gonna, I was gonna skate by <laughs> <laughs> but so on the rerun or re-release of in the probably late 90s early 2000s they re-released gone with the wind for people to go see in the movie theater. Sure. And uh, now movies are, are digital. They don't really come in cans anymore with film and things like that. If you have no idea about that old school process that you literally had to put the movie together reel by reel and play it through the projector. Right. So gone with the wind comes in. And at the time it does, I'm a projectionist. So I open the can to start building this thing. Mm -hmm. And in a can, imagine like a big 10 round looking can. It's got a lid that you open it. So then it kind of looks like Pac-Man. And in that can would be reels, big reels of film. And depending on how big a movie was, it would have, you know, four, five, six reels. Gone with the Wind had like a lot of reels because it was a long movie. You basically it's had to build two movies. Movie. Yeah. That thing, they would, they, they had to have pulled it from like 
many, many years before that and so, like stored it in some warehouse. Mm-hmm. It smelled straight like like just rank <laughs> fishness <laughs> nasty hit. <laughs> I'll never forget fish that. Fishness nasty Now when I think hit. of Gone with the Wind, basically I think of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> and it, or like fish and it has no. You'll never watch the movie. I now, can't now because yeah, I, I used to literally when you would go turn the stuff off at night, the, it still didn't smell good. Like mm. that film just did not have a good smell to it. Ugh. Martin Scorsese would tell you to handle it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we, it was, it was, it was cool. I miss those days. But John, top five before we go on talking about the topic. I guess number one would be Captain America. Ooh. Mm. There's just, I mean, there's just no, no better man, no better. And Steve Rogers. Morals, no better dignity, no better honor code than Steve Rogers. There's Superman. Just, He's in the DC. Marvel <laughs> universe. Um, I think, uh, oh, that's a good I one. think Peter Parker right now. Yeah. I just loved his character in, uh, in Spider-Man Homecoming. Number three. Hmm. Kind of got a thing with uh, Bruce Banner. I just think he's. I just think that character is cool. I like what they're doing with it, doing mm. the best that they can with a movie without a movie. Right, that's true. Um, well, Star Lord, I, I like Star Lord a lot. He's good too. And uh, Sylvester Sloan. <laughs> but F Star Lord. That's all I'm going to say right now. Because <laughs> for me, Chris. Mm-hmm. F Star Lord. I think everyone's Twitter that. feels the same way. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, that was dude, part. I didn't write the script. <laughs> that was another thing I didn't like. I, I didn't like that movement, but yeah. Is it a movement? Yeah. Is it a I thing? I was like, when I saw what they're doing, I was like, oh, come on. No, I mean, that's I mean just in the movie. F Star Lord. I love him. Yeah. I love Chris Pratt. Yeah. He's like, he's like awesome. Sauce. I'll go watch a terrible Jurassic Park movie <laughs> with him in a couple of weeks. I don't have I don't you know, a lot of faith that. in that one, but and, I'll watch it. Yeah. It's, I don't know about this one, John. Yeah. What? Jurassic World. Evolution. I tell you what, though. I'm excited about the game. What game? I hope it ends up being good. The, you talking about the World Cup? <laughs> the you know dr- how much uh, you love? You want a beer while you watch the World Cup? <laughs> so, t- God. But, yeah. yeah uh, technically, we played the topic stuff, right? Topic is. <laughs> <laughs> Ten more minutes after. <laughs> yeah. This terrible. This is great. This yeah. is. This is, you know, you're going away next week, and it's just yeah. going out with a bonfire. <laughs> uh, the topic is so Moss. On a bonfire. Oh, oh, see what you did there, yeah. Jen. <laughs> but yes, Moss, the uh, yeah. PSVR game. And for the people going, why in the heck are they talking about Moss? That game's like the answer. Three is, months old. <laughs> the answer is we no. Don't. It's we not, ain't got nothing. It came out like two twenty eight. I could have swore it came out a March. month ago. March. Came out March. 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 <laughs> it came out in March, John. So it's March. about a little mouse that you feed <clears throat> and you train and you put on a little wheel and it spins the wheel. Mm. Right? John didn't read the pre-show notes, did he? <laughs> no research. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he typed Moss question mark. Yeah, like the subject. Ron Burgundy, Moss? <laughs> Moss? I just wasn't sure. And I went, I was, uh, it was Sunday and I was like, oh, we know how Sean is. He gets busy and he sometimes forgets. I never I get, doubt you. I get things like because we like, didn't really talk about it as in a fin- final kind of way. If you would, we, um, we lobbed it up there as a as a possibility. To be fair, I was behind the scenes making sure that it, Sean he, knew. But if either <laughs> of y'all, fair either enough. of y'all, would have logged on to your PlayStation, I saw yes, and I saw you Saturday that you were on there Sunday, and so I knew, I knew he was. And playing. at least like look at your friends list. Yeah. You'd see I was playing. Malt. I noticed you were messaged. You messaged me last night. I did. I was shampooing the carpet. You were. I did Shampoo hear about that story is too. Better. Um, it's funny though, we're, we're, we're at a point now and it, I think it's super cool that we can talk about VR games because both of us have access to, so sure. does that, I'm excited from a, from sitting in this chair, talking to this microphone perspective that we can do that now, but yeah, I we can. That's an interesting perspective. I feel left out. <laughs> well, you shouldn't cause you, you got to go get the five and then we'll have all yeah. three <laughs> the five. or get the uh, yeah, Oculus go when it comes out, John. That got a nine score Dude, that from thing IGN. Looks amazing, the Oculus Go. Oh yeah, everyone's praising it. And then now and that's um, just your phone. Praise you, no, like it's, I it's no should. phone in it. It's just oh, I it's it was, its own contained device. I thought it used your phone. No, no, it's kind of like a phone, but it's just that instead of having to use it, you just have the thing, and there's no wire. And they say it's very comfortable. Mm. A little side note there, John. I'm put that very, on, I'm gonna put that on my face. Just let it rest on my face. You yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me look into your Oculus um, so Rift. Yeah. So, uh, what, 
if you missed last week's show, shame on you, but we discussed that we all, Chris and I have uh, VRs now. And I literally, my PlayStation VR, I was thinking about this on the way over here, it, it literally got placed in my lap. I did not know I was getting it. Yeah. You knew I was getting it, John. But when I say that, Tinley brought it in on, on my, uh, on my birthday and she sat <laughs> it on my lap. And on top of it were like a, other things that I opened, like a pap and things like that. So I, I, I what kind of pop did you get? I don't remember. Oh, I got, uh, two World of Warcraft pops. Okay. Mm. I got Illidan and Arthas. Mm-hmm. Movies or what? The movie ones are the what? classic. Classics. Good. Yeah. Hmm. Illidan and Arthas, dude. I got Arthas. No, you don't. And you? Where you got Arthas at over there? Hmm? Yeah, I'm forever. You do. <laughs> so, um, with that said, the first thing, if it, as long as I knew about the PSVR and, and last year's E3, one of the biggest, I, I shouldn't say one of the biggest things I took out from it, but oh, in the yeah. VR, in the VR showcase that they had, because if you remember, Sony did actually focus on VR games. I saw a little game called Moss really for like, I felt like the first time. And Chris and I would always say, yeah, I want to play Moss. Can't wait to play Moss. I really this, do. this and this. It's, and at this point, by the time I go into it, there's already tons of articles about there, out there about it. Um, you see things like good ratings for it. You see all like the Metacritic scores, this and that. Everybody's really giving praise about it. So I was very, I tried to stay away from it because I knew eventually I wanted to play it. So yeah, mm-hmm. I go and, um, I get the game. I install it. It's, it's awesome. It's, I'm determined to make it my first, no. <laughs> I'm determined to make it my first VR experience and I'll be damned, John. Can he say that? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. I put beavers the, build dams. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And they also, that's big. Also flow. No, oh, God, <laughs> son of a. <laughs> All right, you got it. Six twenty. Jesus, yeah, I got it. John. Yeah, <laughs> but aren't they like dogs technically? No, probably not. No. Nah, okay, so um, you put the headset on and you start, and and you you're the you're what they call the reader, okay? And this game wait, actually, wait, wait. I'm the narrator. You, so like you're that. like so you're Lavar Burton, pretty much, yeah. Okay, and, and you're the what reader. You, you and you come into a. Um, when you sit down, there's a book in front of you, right? Just and like you're, Wonder Book. <laughs> you're in a, you're in a, you're in a, I miss Wonder Book. You're in a hall that looks very much like Harry Potter from the movie. Um, it's a dinner hall, mm. floating candles, but it, 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 the floating candles aren't there. You get the impression, but it's that big hall and you're at a table that, um, the book is there and there's a candle <laughs> and you immediately realize you look around and the first thing, if you watch people on YouTube, the first thing that you go is like, whoa, this looks like, this is awesome. Yeah. And it's a Chris asked if this game had the PlayStation Move um, option, and it does not. You play with a controller, and you're really meant to play seated. Even though at some point you're going to want to lean forward to look around corners to to find little like hidden objects, um, and it really interacts with you in that way. Where it's it's it, it requires you to do that in some cases, but in sometimes you're it's mainly just like a platformer. So um, anyway, you, you start the story, and the narrator comes on and explains like who you are. You're a reader. And it tells you basically a story, and it's the intro part, and it says, this thing happened many years ago, um, yada, 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 and then <laughs> this happened, right? So you're like, that was an amazing little intro story. I don't. It wanna, sounded it, amazing. It's a short game, so I, I really want to skirt away skirt, from, skirt. From, from from any so kind of So you already spoiler. beat it? Yeah. Hmm. I don't, I don't want to put anything like that out there. How Can long ask, did it take? Like, I just wondering. Four hours. Yeah. Well, actually, for a VR Three game, half, that's kind of long. Four hours, yeah. How was your game? Is, uh, <laughs> is it, um, what's that near? Look at that right there, John. Chris is showing that, that right there. That's good. When you see that, you, you, you know, like when you read the cover of a book or, or you see the cover of a book and it, for me, that always is the first thing to make my mind go, all right, what kind of story is this going to be? Right. A good cover of a book sucks you in and then the story, yeah, it's, it's good. So Moss has like this font for the title. It looks, it looks fairy tale-ish. It looks, it's very Germanic. Yeah. Germanic. Yes. Yeah. That's literally what yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> He's like, that's literally what it is. <laughs> so yeah, in the story, everything starts feeling good. Well, all right. So then you have this flash that happens before your eyes and you're like, now you're transported to the world of where the mouse is. It's a girl, John. She's adorable. And you're sitting there like in this little cove, not cove. It's, it's like you're in a forest and there's like a log here and there's greenery there. And she kind of comes around a corner. And she's, she's adorable. Hmm. Right. And you're like, oh my, you lean in and you can see her real good. She's like, she's a mouse. She's right there. And, uh, she notices you, which is the, I don't, I don't recall a game or 
if you guys think of one where the character you're playing knows you're there. Kind of like breaks the fourth wall. Kind of yeah. like Deadpool. Exactly. And and then you're almost prompted mm. to kind of look down because right in front of you is a puddle of water. So when you look down, you see a picture of yourself. You were in the visor? No, you're it's what you are in the game. You're <laughs> okay. the you're the reader. Okay. Right. And from that point on, her her personality takes over and she's like, Hey, well what happens in you if you remember the pre story I told you, something happens. Mm-hmm. And like let's just say a piece of something kind of breaks off of another thing <laughs> and she immediately is drawn to this thing that's glowing on the ground. Yeah. Her name's Quill for all of you wondering. Okay. Mm, okay. She's, she's adorable. And uh, you're like, yeah, let's, let's go check it out. And so she turns around and, and she, you realize I'm, I'm going to move her around with my PlayStation controller. Mm. Nothing's going to be crazy. I wonder if this is going to be the whole game, right? Just kind of like you're controlling the mouse. She picks up the thing and she's immediately excited. And you're like, why is she so excited? She wants to run home and tell her father about it. She wants to show her the things she's got. And also it's getting dark. So she's like, I got to get home. Let's go. So then you follow her very, very, I believe it's the next screen. You, you realize the interaction you're going to have in the game with your controller. It's not going to be just a um, thumbstick here, jump there. You have to now interact on the next screen by doing things like I move my arms forward. So John and Chris can see it grabbing, like say a box yeah, and pulling it back. I got you. Or or picking up a statue and sliding it where you need to go. Uh, so that's cool. And then she makes it to her town and, and life's good. The, ch- the chat, the town, the, the game at that point, full of charm. Like the music that's playing, the scenery that you're in, everything's just, I, you literally, if you don't have a smile on your face, if you're not just happy, I don't believe you're human. So John, I'm I'm gonna yeah. If John ever, definitely. Is if not you ever smart. play it, I want I want to know about it. So you take this this artifact <laughs> that you found. Um, you go through town there. All the little other mouse little mouse people. They're like hey, 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 hey. and um, you take it to your dad, and your dad is like completely not okay with you having this artifact. He's like, what did you do? Like this is not good. He starts like getting his stuff together, and dad takes off. He's like, you don't go anywhere. You stay here. I'll be back. And then, and then let's just say you got to go find dad. And that's really where the story kind of takes, takes off. You you go from this nice little nestled town of cuteness and amazingness. And now you have to go on an adventure and you're just a little mouse named Quill. And your main goal is to go find your dad. So then you come across. Is your first name Peter? No, I don't. I don't. I think her name's just Quill, like Quill the mouse. But I think that's funny that you said Peter Quill. Um, would you, is this, uh, how is this narratively driven? Is this like a, what remains of Edith Finch type game or is it a platformer? No, no, no. It's definitely a platform. Okay. Hmm. It it is. If you've played Edith, Edith Finch, it's not like that. Um, so you can die in this game? Yeah. And you actually get a trophy for the first time you die. Fun fact. You can platinum this thing? Yeah, it's very platinumable. Um, <laughs> very <laughs> platinum. Uh, platinumable. There's a couple I'm gonna have to look up. One of, one of the trophies is to startle Quill, and mm-hmm. and another one is to annoy Quill, like by not progressing in the story. And that's the thing that really is a highlight for me is because of how. L- let's say I'm at a point, and how is it basically how she interacts with you when when either you're way off of what you're supposed to do, or when you're really close to helping her get to where she wants to go. Um, mm-hmm. she'll look at you and she'll start clapping, um, or or in a if a situation where I'm getting close to a point where I can figure out how to get to the next part in this puzzle, she'll start jumping and pointing and saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, like right there, right there. And that, that like adorableness carries out through the whole game. It even gets to a point where she's really, she, she kind of starts to be down on herself. Right. And she realizes that through everything that you've been through, the people she's met, the people she's lost or whatever, you're still there. So she really, she realizes it and pleads to you to help her kind of keep going. So that's. You, you build a relationship without the mouse, without, without dialogue. It's amazing. Really, Hmm. really just with. That's always the best kind of storytelling. Yeah. Just through the adventure and, and, and you become sucked into wanting to help her you know, do what she wants to do. And that's ultimately find her dad. Like what happened to dad? Uh, the visuals, I, I can't, I, I can't speak enough on how, on how like this world is such a fantasy driven, beautiful place that you get to go. 
Um, there are times where you're in, in darkness, but the way they choose the color to pop, like mm-hmm. there's a, there's a fairy that follows you and it leaves a trail of like fairy glitter. It's, it's mind blowing on how great they, they did this game. Mm-hmm. Um, like Chris said, it's, it, it was a four hour game and that's long for a VR game, but it's perfect. Um, well, I, I make a joke because I may actually have time to finish them. Yeah, Cause you know, that's what I do. Um, Hey, yo. Um, yeah. it's yeah. Like so far, some people are like, God, it's only this long. And there's been a couple of them. Like, I think like the star Wars experience. And, and I've said this, like Arkham, I think took me less than an hour yeah, to do. Very short. But most of them have been in that range of like two to four hours. And for a lot of them, if, it feels right because one, it feels like I could sit down and play the majority of this and one sitting in my head's not going to get tired. I'm not going to get worn out doing it. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't ever feel like it's, it's wearing out. It's welcome. Like, you know, you're getting a full experience that works and flows and doesn't have any, all right, go collect 20 of these things now, yeah. you know, and that's, that's been the good thing about these games. It's got a nice blend of, of puzzle solving. Mm-hmm. I actually joked with Chris about it went from really elementary style puzzles mm-hmm. to full out, like, you know, trigonometry or some hard <laughs> like math. And, and then, and then on top of it, it's got some combat. You start off with a sword. Um, almost like what's the guy's name? Uh, where he's like, my name is something, something. Montego Montoya. Yeah, that Your kind of sword. Uh, yeah. Was it like a rapier? Yes, I believe so. It's got like a rapier style sword. Eventually that gets kind of upgraded to something really cool. Um, there's interaction with you when, when, when Quill. John's amused by simple words. I know. Um, <laughs> when, when, when Quill figures out a puzzle, she'll hand you something to hold to take it back to where you got to go. So there's that interaction. Um, there's a point, John, and I thought about you when I was playing it. You have to go into a, like a church ish. And I thought of a link to the past. Yeah. Oh. Um, mm. and, and the way the, the light came through this church, they had that in Final Fantasy seven too. Yeah. But it wasn't in VR. Mm. It will be. It could be. I wouldn't um, be surprised. So, with that. And, and they have treasure chests that you find and, and there's a big, like she walks up to it and she opens it up. And I could, I can't help but think that if some kind of way Nintendo comes up with a VR, a, this game spoke to me like a Zelda in VR would work and it would be Ooh. amazing. Sure. That's the kind of like charm this game has, right? Sure. So yeah. So there's that. Uh, you mentioned that you die. Yeah. You can, she, she can't swim to be a mouse. I thought mice could swim, <laughs> but they can't apparently. She like, I mean, neither can Kratos in God of War. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> he doesn't now, need to. He's now, got a boat. <laughs> it, it, the, you, just, you just can't. You can't jump in the water. It's always that speaking was so, of that. I forgot to say it. We got platinums in that game. Oh yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. Congrats, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the fighting. It starts off actually. I believe the fighting aspect kind of comes up in the way that it should. It I'm glad you said there was fighting because if, for a second I was thinking platformer like rhyme is a platformer and you don't you can die but you don't fight enemies you, you avoid them and it seemed like in in this in this situation I'm like there's a tiny little mouse you would think that what that tiny little mouse is doing is avoiding danger as opposed to facing it head on but i kind of like the fact that there's combat in it I'm yeah they start off pretty easy from the rapey your sword they start off easy and they're like <laughs> these beetly looking things right and yeah. they're, they're very actually easy when you're one-on-one <clears throat> mm-hmm. they have a, a really distinct tail of when they're going to hit you and you learn how to dodge and do all that stuff. Uh, what gets you is when you finally get into a room where the game goes, hi, you thought you were going to get one or two. How about a wave of four or five at a time? Have fun with that. Uh, later how about on that, later on, later on that, Sorry, uh, you said, how? Um, yeah, 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 you got it later on. <laughs> uh, the beetle gets equipped with like this monster cannon. So you have, you have like a beetle, a shooting, beetle cannon. Shooting you from a ledge while the other ones are running around you. Nice. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's fun. Then later on, there's a thing that it's kind of, he comes out and he's floating. He's got a big um, kind of like ghostbustery thing on his back, but it's full of like this toxic liquid. And as soon as he sees you, he's like, whoop. And as Richard gets hard, and then he, <laughs> and then he pops. <laughs> okay, got you. I figured out what you were saying. So yeah, but anyway, his little, his little tank gets really big and boom, blows up. So, um, uh, <laughs> Later on, you learn that you can take, 
You can take control of the animals. The tank is called Richard Pouch. <laughs> Richard Pouch? Yeah. So later on, you realize, I'm a, as the reader, I can interact with everything. Like, I can break pots if I want to. Um, you heal Quill by hovering over her and, and kind of giving her life. As the reader, you, you keep her alive. Um, so there are certain puzzles they introduce, and they, they do it in a way where they're like, you need to use this thing that we've got here to help you do this puzzle. Case in point, there's two switches, but there's one quill. You realize both switches have to be activated at the same time. How does that happen? Well, the game just so happens to give you a little beetle rolling around to the side. And you go, okay, oh. so what do I do? So then that is now leveled up later on to where we're going to introduce this platform. So the beetles are Atreus? No, because they want to kill you. Well, I guess technically Atreus at one point may have wanted to. <laughs> Boy. But um, so then Boy. they got, then they, they in- introduce, um, what am I trying to think of? The things you step on platformery thingy yeah. that now needs to move and turn. Okay. And you have to do that as the reader, you have to get quill from point A to point B. And how do you do that? And there's a lot of thought into some of these puzzles. Some of them are really easy. There's some that you'll, you might spend longer than you anticipated on. You could easily spend more than four hours on this game. If you were dumb, you know, or if you were just kind of completionist and that's what I've been doing, mm. or that's what I did is, uh, there's also these little scrolls on the ground and they're part of the collector's portion of the game that people, that people like in these kind of games. Does that expand the story or something a little bit if you were interested in it? <clears throat> what it does, if you remember back when I said that when you start the story, you're sitting in that hall and there's a book in front of you. Every so often you go back to that book. The game gets to a point. It kind of goes to the book is used almost in a cutscene type fa- fashion because it's like chapters. It's chapters. Yeah. The, it's yeah. I believe the, the final trophy is called like, <sighs> You completed the Moss chapter or something like that. It's you. It's the book. This is what it is. Um, and then next to the book, you start seeing a picture, kind of like being formed. I won't tell you what the picture is, but all the little scrolls are are pieces of that picture. That animation is pure brilliance. She goes over to it and she's like, "Hmm," and she picks it up and she, it like it blows up and that kind of little charminess stuff that it does. Uh, the the beetle with the little gun on it that I said is when he kills you, they start like shooting bullets in the air like, yeah, we won. <laughs> and that annoys you so bad because this stupid little beetle shooting like four or five bullets. And, and in VR, you're like watching them. You're watching them like it's all right there. The first time you actually are in combat with Quill in VR is mind blowing. Mm. So then later on you progress and you're in combat while there's a puzzle to solve, while there's a moving platform just to get to the next point. It's it's absolutely it's it's awesome. It even though it's like a a 3 to 4 hour game, it's an experience that I haven't I haven't not wanted to to not finish. I I, I want to go play it again. You know, we talked about this today at lunch where we beat God of War and then it was it's very hard for me to want to You guys went pl- to lunch today? Yeah. Went to BK Lounge. Oh. Um <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it's like, <laughs> I have that serious moment. And then you're like, BK's on. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> John had chicken. So did I. I was trying to get real into, good uh, to, it wasn't, yeah. JL so, Express. um, what was I saying? I you were talking about you and I beating God of War. Oh, yeah. We and were talking about you, you hammered through that because for you, the drive was to get the platinum trophy. For sure. For me, it was like, is it there? I don't, I don't care. Like I beat the game. Yeah. Uh, with Moss, I want to go play it again because yeah, it's it's done in a storybook fashion, you know. Sure. Uh, and it, it's just it's done so well. Like, I I hope more. I hope obviously a sequel comes out, but I hope more games like like this exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, a demo that I played and I, I mentioned last week was called Star Child. It it's going to come out at some point. It it appears to use that. The thing that VR can do very well would put you in a dark environment and then brighten that environment up with really sure. vivid colors. Give you, give you perspective. It, that is amazing, right? And Moss captures that really, really well. Mm. Um, like I mentioned the church scene, there was another one where you go into this house it's, and where it's a bar and the, the chandelier is hanging and, and there's like smoke ish. Um, it's 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 absolutely brilliant. I love the game. I, if you have a PlayStation VR, I highly recommend it. 
How many I Richards? Think, uh, I think it's a must play. It's an easy 10 Richards for me. Oh, dang. It's it's up there. With, dang. It's going to be in my top five game of the year, without a doubt. I mean, they're going to have to really bring some, you know, better major, major titles. That come. I mean, it's, I it's, like, it's, it's a cute little fun experience. I mean, it really is. John, you remember how, like, in the old days, IGN, when they would do their reviews at the bottom, they'd have, like, the breakdown pros and cons. Mm-hmm. I was imagining, like, if Sean was writing this review back then for them, it would have been, like, pro, spectacular charminess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the Wikipedia page now, it's very short. Like, because, I mean, the game yeah. is not that big. Cons. Beatles make fun of you when they when you And it, I, I made a mistake. It was not her father. It's her uncle. Ah. Right. So, it's it's well, good. it's super, super good. Um. I knew that I don't know how much I can talk about without spoiling it. I knew the game's short, so that's going to be tough. Um, oh. But I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't want to play. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to do anything <laughs> else. Chris wants to play it for sure. I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, if you've got a PSVR, I don't know why you don't own this game. And sure. John, I bought it digitally because I had to, so I can play this Moss. What do you mean? You bought it digitally? Yeah, but it's coming out on um on. On a physical copy. Uh, are you going to buy it? <laughs> uh, probably, yeah. Okay. And then you can play it for All sure. Right, cool. Uh, Tinley, she thought the mouse was cute. I didn't let her really get involved in this one. Yeah. Um, you know, PSVR has that, that age limit warning, and my kid's half the age of the yeah. warning. Yeah. So I very I limit her to what she plays, but she thought the mouse was adorable. My mom put the VR headset on. She was like, oh, my God. They always say it's, that's the best thing to do is put moms and dads in VR. She says, it's like you're there. <laughs> And I can't, I, I really want you to come to my house, John, to just, I want to see your initial reaction to the world coming alive in Moss. Other VR titles, you know, that's what VR is for. It's to, it's to give you the perspective of, of everything, the depth, the looking around, everything, right? I want you, I'm going to come over there and we're going to fire a Resident Evil. Oh, the heck with Moss. The, I don't care about the, a cute The funny thing rabbit. that you say that on Twitter, uh, mouse, uh, <laughs> said rabbit. On Twitter, we have, a uh, person who said that he would love to re- like go live with us, maybe on YouTube or something mm. with, <laughs> with me playing resident evil in VR. Yeah. We definitely and, uh, set that up. Here's the thing. Moss is, is more of a beginner VR experience as far as what you get to sit down and you get to play with a controller. There are other titles where they want you standing up, moving around, shooting guns, taking cover. Correct. Things are moving fast. That's a more advanced thing. This yeah. is a more casual thing. And I'm telling you, you but you do have to at certain points get in get really into it. I'm literally, John, leaning into my chair like this to look around a, a corner to see like if there's a little quill over there. Yeah. <laughs> or not a quill, a little like, you know, a little thing I told you about. Yeah. And and people walk in, they're like, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> is is a very weird thing. And I'm like I like you don't I don't know how to explain it and you 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 just can't like when you get into a VR game you just can't give two flying flips what anyone else is thinking yeah. of what you look like in the real world because it's about the experience like I'm sitting here like you know Beat Saber right yeah you have to move to the left or right to dodge things and you know you're doing these moves like where you have the one thing you got to hit out here so you're like. You know, like slashing, like you've got a lightsaber and in you your make hand. The and I imagine, you. and I imagine if someone was singing in here while I'm playing, I'm, it looks more like, I think I look like, you think you look cool. like really animated and like I'm a Jedi. And you probably watch me. I'm like, yeah. 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 To, to piggyback yeah. on that. Yeah. Got uh, it. Oh, no. When you, when you first start <laughs> off boss, it's like, and I think all the PlayStation games do this. They're like, make sure your play area is clear. Sure. So the camera, do you get to define it? And I'm PlayStation VR. It shows you kind of where to be. Yeah. Like it's not like, well, yours. I mean like the cool thing with Oculus, like before you start, right. Mm-hmm. You take one of the controllers and you trace around where your boundaries are. Yeah. Like oh, that's you cool. tell it. So no, not you, like that at all. No. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but it, it, the camera shows a picture of your, your, yourself sitting there, the mess that you are <laughs> with your dumb VR headset on, you slouched over terrible posture, your gut hanging out. <laughs> And it's like, hey, that person, make sure you don't, you know, die. <laughs> and it's weird because, like, you'll get caught up in it. And I, I know my room, and I'm in a rolling chair. Sure. And I'll know that all of a sudden I'm, you know, turned a little bit. And there's turned my up. couch. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be touching the couch. Like, how did I get here? And it's because of it, it does a real good job of, of taking you in that world uh, and making you kind of really fall in love with a little mouse and going on an adventure. So 
It's good stuff, man. Yay, bestiality. Yay. All right. Well, uh, that was nice. Well, thank you. I, I can't wait for you to play it, and hopefully one day John gets the experience. So. Nope. No, no. If, you guys, if you guys have played it out there, so. let us know how you liked Moss. Um, let's do some news. Yeah, I'm down with it. We got some some good news. Okay. Hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly Games Chat presents the news. News! news! Yeah. John's here right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. You, didn't have to you know what the first way. news is? I got to get this off my chest. You be God of War. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you platinum God of War. Yeah. And I'm I platinum God of War. Mike D, aka Ryan Leaf, has platinum God of War. Adam, who's playing on hard mode, freaking platinum God of War this week. Yeah. One person hasn't beaten of our group of circle here that bought this game on day one. Mm. He's off there freaking fighting Thanos in, in Fortnite, and I've had enough of it. G off. If you're listening, you need to get your act together. This is an official call out. This is Resident Evil 7. That's what you're doing right now. <laughs> did, look, he not, Sean. did he not finish Resident Evil? No, he did, but he okay. gives Sean so crap much crap. About yeah. Me not finish and it. And you should. Was... You should stick up for yourself on this time because this game is like I know. 10 times the size of Resident Evil. I 7. know. It's actually terrible. And he's, he's on a daily basis losing credit as a gamer for, as far as I'm concerned. I don't even know if I know him anymore. I don't even, I mean, cause it's not like Fortnite's going anywhere, right? Exactly. And I mean, until he finishes God of War, uh-huh. he referred to him as boy. Oh, <laughs> ooh. Oh, boy. Boy. I'm just going to call <laughs> him. good. Boy. Boy. <laughs> I'm going to call him Johnny Manziel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rage 2. Yeah. After a Walmart leak and a week of teasing viral leaking. Uh, Rage 2 has been confirmed to be a thing. The game will be developed by Avalanche Studios, who previously brought us Mad Max. Probably more well-known would be Just Cause. Uh, according to sources, the first Rage game sold well enough to get the green light as a sequel, but with mediocre reviews, it's surprising this is actually coming. The game is set for spring 2019. Are you looking forward to this game? I saw... Did you guys catch the gameplay trailer today? Yeah. I don't remember... I think the first game was open world, but I it don't. Was. It I don't think you could play with anyone else. So this is a co-op shared open world that might be cool. I'm kind <laughs> of I don't know. Avalanche, you know, I love Just Cause. I've played a little bit of Mad Max and it was fine. Um, I might be a little bit more excited for this if it was like Id, the core. Id is Id. heavily involved. Yeah, it's just this is the primary development studio. Yeah. I mean, like, or if it was like Bethesda and it was that Doom team doing it. I don't know. I'm kind of like just going to wait and see. And when it comes up, we'll see. It, I don't know if I would the call trailer myself excited. To me, yeah. The trailer for me looks rad. Yeah. Yeah, it looks rad. But I, uh, but that's, you know, obviously yeah. obviously Rage, when it was first previewed, looked rad. But um, to be honest, I, I have a copy of that game still. Um, mm, do you? Yeah, uh, Ben, my buddy Ben, um, let me borrow it a few years ago, and I never played it. He said, "He said, don't believe what people are saying. This game's actually quite legit." In fact, my first memory it was a very divisive game. Yeah, That's and, and my first memory of the of the game is when uh, Ryan, Ryan showed it to me on PC. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Ryan was playing when yeah. when we were living together. Mm-hmm. He wasn't. I don't think he ended up being too enthralled with it, if Ooh. I recall. Thrall. Uh, yeah. Oh. Enthralled. Oh. But Thrall. the game but the, the <laughs> game looks so kinetic. I mean, it's just oh. it's high octane. It, there's yeah. just too, I kind of though like it when looks I look really at it, crazy. It's really weird because I look at it and I go, Well, there's Borderlands though. And I think that's the one more mm. people would probably just gravitate Borderlands to. Borderlands is pretty awesome, John. It's like, We're still waiting, you know. So Oh yeah. I mean, we'll we'll get it eventually, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh the thing was I know you didn't put the other stuff. There was a lot of stuff in that Walmart. True. Yeah. There was a ton of stuff. Most importantly, supposedly, we're getting a new Splinter Cell game. Yeah. And that was something five years. I was going to say, that was something not too long ago. We, You especially said on this fine podcast that yeah. you would like to see that. Kinda, of all the stuff that Ubisoft yeah. has coming out, that like, or you don't know what's coming out Terrible. from them. 
terrible, John. What like, did I do? You're terrible. Because I yawned? You drank a monster. No, what'd you drink? A uh, Red Bull? Yeah. yeah. Red Bull. <laughs> and they Hands can't see it. Asleep. But we see you yawning. Yeah. <laughs> we see it. Caffeine um, has no effect. Like, what is going on? You know well, when you drink, drink, yeah, I was about to say, when he drinks like four or five billion Diet Dr. Peppers a year, it just doesn't work Wait, anymore. they have sugar in them? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, like. That's not I, funny? I love Splinter Cell. I've always loved them. I think they were one of the more unique things out there. Um, cause you know, it's like a current, hard, man. current and future, like, but still based in reality, uh, kind of tactical, <laughs> um, yeah. what's the word I'm looking for right now? Stealth, stealth game. Thank you. I was like, God, uh, why am I, in, why is it leaving? It happens sometimes. And like, you know, it, it's kind of like this iron sense where you can, um, no, oh. uh, where you can kill, <laughs> Like where you can kill everyone or you can just take them out. You can use different ways to do it. Speaking of stealth. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but yeah, I, I really hope that's true. Sp- that, that was on there. Just cost four was on or five. Four, no, it wasn't four. a Walmart like USA leak. No, it was a Canada. Yeah. And hey, you, know, you, you know how the Canadians do. Yeah. They're, they're, kind, huh. of, they're kind of rich. What, what do I mean by that, John? <laughs> I don't know. But one of these days I'm going to tell you guys my uh, Canadian joke. Uh, but most important. What's it a boot? You yeah, mentioned you stealth games. Uh-huh. Casey reached out to me and said, I finished Dishonored. Ooh. Ooh. Dishonored and too. Hellblade. Oh. Ah. He was very high on Hellblade. Mm-hmm. Obviously, who isn't? It's basically what God of War copied. And You don't know that. You don't know that they didn't <laughs> copy it. <laughs> <Brother> Corey's <laughs> kind of gone on the record saying, like, man, uh, it really hurts when you're, like, making this thing and, like, the studio is kind of just doing what you're doing a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. And being because it's got that one shot thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he was he was not so hype on Dishonored. Oh wow. Because so, it's terrible. So we're no longer friends. Just like Bioshock. <sighs> uh, he loves Bioshock. I'm talking to John about things right now. You can screw Casey face on that. And the way too. he said and I, <laughs> and, I, and I get what he's saying. He said it, it kind of uh it punished you depending on how you play the game. Yeah, that's in that was kind of the way I honestly was a little bit with um uh, pray like you know it's like there are these cool things out here for you to do but literally if you use them you're gonna experience a lot of pain for it you know um it didn't bother me i guess so much with um with dishonored because you didn't you didn't feel handicapped off you just like you were handicapped in the way of like how you dealt with people in the end do you kill them or what not was, right? what was that that you long i'm just i laugh because i'm i remember Sean saying something about the rats. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't know. The rats? Yeah, you said you, yeah, you, you were playing you were design. playing a certain way and you and um <laughs> wait, you said y'all got a rat problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny now, I'm sorry. It's okay. But it was funny. It then. was <laughs> yeah. hysterical. Y'all got a bit of a rat problem. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff there. Um will it all be shown? And E3, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised uh-huh. if hey, a lot of it is. You know it what? wasn't can... just Cause 5, it was Forza Horizon 5. Yeah, because I screwed up. Yeah. Why do y'all keep to... pointing at each other? Because we hate each other. <laughs> we know we're making points. Y'all are literally pointing. Point hey, but one. you know what? We can speculate more on E3 stuff next week. Yeah, I think that's True. what we're going to do. Ooh. Without you. Yep. You. <laughs> give us your list anyway, We will, and we will read it out. Yeah, uh, give us a couple of things. Please, Not now. I'm please. going to be at Magic Kingdom yeah. and Animal Kingdom. Think of some stuff tonight. And you got thumbs? He doesn't okay. know how. He doesn't know how to check the Facebook. I hope in the Animal the Kingdom you get eaten me? by a yeah. lion. That's not true. It's kind of true, but not true. <laughs> you really want me to go there? Uh, Did you see? Uh, anyways, yeah. ne- Nest Classic returns. Yes, it does. Which is devastating to me since I'm holding on to two of them unopened. <laughs> I think they've already uh, uh, pre-ordered and actually sold out. Yeah, Nintendo has announced that the NES Classic Edition will return to stores this month. Quote, NES Classic Edition will return to stores on June 29th. Yeah. Uh, this system and the SNES Classic Edition are expected to be available through the end of the year. NES Classic comes with 30 games from the classic 8-bit era. It's like someone finally said, you know what? You guys want some more money? Let's go make some more money real quick. Well, That's what they did. We have no plans for virtual console at this time. Exactly. Yeah. Because of <laughs> this. Because you can buy these two systems. Yeah. Keep paying us more in various ways. I will like say. Three years from now, we're bringing virtual console to This article also <laughs> said that there'll be, of course, 
plenty of systems that are going to be in production, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I think so. And, and I've gone to our local Target, and without fail, the SNES Classic is is right where it's supposed to be. There's usually four yeah. or five of them. Really? If I go back the next day or two, it's dwindled down to maybe one or none, but then within the next week, it's got more in it. So pick one up, man. I think they've finally it. woken up to the fact that this is, uh, this is money. a lot of money for them. Yeah. You think? Right. Mm-hmm. I think they were just looking for originally just like, a bridge to get them to the switch. They're like, look, we need to make some money in this quarter. Here it is. And now it's like, Oh wait, no, no, no. this is much more than what we thought it was, which was my point at the beginning. Uh, monster hunter generations, ultimate Capcom has announced that monster hunter generations ultimate for the Nintendo switch. It will be released exclusively on the switch on August 28th. You will have access to local wireless and online multiplayer with up to three other hunters. You can transfer what? your original saves from the 3DS version of the game. And new features include G-Rank, which allows you to go up against more dangerous versions of familiar foes. Any interest, Sean? Or are you good with uh, Monster Hunter 5? The or 4 or whatever it was. The one that world. came out earlier this year. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one's really good. So I don't know why I'd want to go play this one. Okay. But because are, it's a version you've probably yes, never played. You're right. Yeah. You're right with your good points. But there, I, I was going to say a lot of people who have this version will be excited to play it on the Switch. Oh, yeah. It's got to be awesome to have something on the Switch. Yeah. And it'll probably sell like gangbusters in Japan. <clears throat> Always does. How do gangbusters <clears throat> sell? Wait till they sell in Japan and you'll know. <laughs> Star Fox. Return. Ooh. See, there was a question mark, so I put the... <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, Kotaku has recently reported on rumors that Retro Studios, who previously worked on the Metroid Prime series in Donkey Kong, has shifted gears to work on a Star Fox series game. Uh, specifically, a racing game known as Star Fox Grand Prix. Uh, uh, the game would come out in 2019 and feature an open hub world like Rare's Diddy Kong Racing. And this game is apparently... Not the only thing that Retro is currently working on. Oh, do we know what the other thing is? <laughs> Not at all. Do you, I guess every race would be about doing a barrel roll. I don't know. I mean, it, before <laughs> before we know the concept of Mario Kart, yeah, and we pitched it like that, we go, "What?" <laughs> Here's my disconnect. And the though. Diddy Kong Racing, I never even played. But there that. are but is people, Mario Kart, right? But no, people look that, back and go, "Diddy yeah. Kong Racing was amazing." Kart though was like go karts. So that seemed yeah. like it could be fun to me. Sure. Star Fox, like spaceship racing? Think F-Zero. I bet they're working on F-Zero. <laughs> we can always dream about that. That would be dope. But it will never happen. Because they just put in Mario Kart levels instead. Yeah. The, where the, it deserves to be. Hey, John, on Mario Kart, there's an F-Zero level. Two of them, actually. <laughs> and and you can you can do it on that level. Yeah. The racing. Do it. Do uh, what? The racing. Do the racing? Yeah, you do the racing. <laughs> That's what you do in that game. Han Solo content for Battlefront 2. Oh, what happened? <laughs> EA and DICE have provided details for Han Solo content. The season starts on May 16th and will be spread across two months. So, hey, that's actually today. Actually, Go get it. They, when they hear this. Yeah. Uh, it will be a Jabba's Palace multiplayer map and will... Uh, be located on the Dune Sea of Tatooine. So that's that's Episode One, right? That we saw that in with uh, and 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 six. What are you talking about? Java's Palace. Remember Episode Four? No, no, I have six, six, yeah, and one, and one, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I said. What I said before. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it will be available in Blast Hero Showdown in Heroes versus Villain modes. Uh, the new Hero Showdown is a 2v2 round base elimination mode which pits teams of two heroes against one another in battle. Mm. Starfighter Custom Arcade is also coming in which you try out Starfighters from every Star Wars era in battle against our players. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That game just keeps on trucking because it. Aaron's Star probably Wars. pretty happy about this. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't even know if he's playing that anymore. I think he is. I don't, I don't know. I think he's playing it right now. He's, <laughs> he's on Destiny or Fortnite. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> he's probably on a bass guitar somewhere. Yeah. That's all he does. Slapping the bass. Uh, I'll see him Thursday. I'll ask him. I'll be like, are you still playing Star Wars? Yeah. Ask him if he knows about the new stuff. Yeah. Do you want to come Thursday? What's Thursday? To what? Deadpool. Oh. I think bad. we're going to 730. Who's going? Uh, I know me and Tony are. I'm guessing Casey. Hmm. Maybe Aaron. That's usually who it hey. is. Hey. Let me know if Aaron goes. Oh. Then I definitely will go. Okay. 
I'm uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be in Orlando. <laughs> We don't, so you're we don't not care gonna about make you. It? I'm not going to make it, guys. You weren't ever going to make it, buddy. I, I do <laughs> want to see Deadpool. Though. You see, with me, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, do I want to go? Because I'm really tired right now. But it's Thursday, even though I'm tired right now. <laughs> so right. my mind is going, I'm going to be tired. Why I don't have tired? a problem this week because we have, a, uh, we have a company tired. picnic there Friday. So I'm not going to make that either. Chris. Yeah, well, I know you I won't. I don't know how to bring like, that to you. but uh, Who's going to DJ? I'm going to be in Orlando. Who's DJ? I don't care. So Can I borrow your DJ. Yeah, I got some stuff to do. <laughs> um, new zombies for Black Ops Four. The official E3 Twitter account seems to be <laughs> revealing a new zombie mode, and now Treyarch has teased the mode by tweeting an image stating, "Quote: Mankind's reckoning will be its salvation." What? And quote: So it begins. Hashtag zombie. Hashtag zombie. Uh, the tweet also features a number of strange symbols, along with the mysterious decaying figure removing an ominous mask. Ooh. Ominous mask. Ominous. Me. Ooh. Battlefield reveal tease. Why Whoa. wouldn't you put that so, so, with the other EA news? Uh, EA is teasing an official reveal for the upcoming Battlefield game. That was usually your part. I yeah, yeah. But we didn't even get to talk because about zombies. Because I, I mentally paired yeah. Black Ops you with should have, You should have, should, have, yeah. should have flopped them. Just yeah. saying. Flopped they could have been paired with flopped. You should have LeBron flopped. Kind of like a hash Why don't you learn how to write I and can do the show notes? better than you. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Put up or shut up. And, uh, Put up um, or shut up. <laughs> anyways, children. Uh, Put them up. Reveal Put date. up. <laughs> the reveal Put date Put up. Put up. for Battlefield's next <laughs> game is May 23rd with a boast that Battlefield will never be the same. <gasps> The slogan seems to further tease and confirm the existence of a battle royale mode, which makes a lot of sense. They, they, I think they have a lot easier time adapting in their world because it's called ro- Battlefield, well, dude. Because they're already doing like sixty four on sixty four, so yeah. you know they got to handle hundred battle royale. The could mode. you imagine? Oh man, could you imagine a battlefield? <laughs> or could you imagine a battle royale yes. where you're in a building and yes. I'm in a tank? Yes, and I just bomb the crap yes. out of your building. Yes, that's so cool. Yes, I want to do that right now. I can imagine all that, Chris. Uh, could you imagine me and you in a plane together? No. Crossing the sea? I don't what? get I don't get in the plane. This sounds weirdly romantic. No. No. Do you want to ride a horse together across the desert as we escape fire? Uh if I can have my own horse. Hey. Why are you touching me? I got one horse. <laughs> uh it's between my legs. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. And its name is Richard. Uh Richard Horse. Sony E three plans. See, because a Richard is <laughs> former president. <laughs> Sony's E3 press conference will take place at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's uh, on June 11. Yes, that's on June 11th. I'm trying to do math real quick, but I had a dumb moment. It's 6 p.m. <laughs> Pacific Standard Time for our West Coast fans. Uh, but- Sony will be focusing on four titles this year primarily. They will be Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Spider-Man, and The Last of Us Part 2. Sean Layden said, quote, We have a great content and we have fantastic updates. I think everyone will be thrilled to see it. And we're taking kind of a different angle on how we're bringing it out. You know what they didn't focus? Mm. Or at least say? What? The zombie motorcycle game that I want to play. Or God of War DLC. Take that, Mike D. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the what's the name of the zombie motorcycle game, Chris? There's a zombie motorcycle. Oh, yeah. That one. Yeah. Um, They were just talking about the early, uh, Days Gone. Yeah. Yeah. They were all like hyped on it. Yeah. And then they're like, eh, we're going to talk like- about that later. <laughs> John, um, how you doing? I'm good, man. Anything on that Sony stuff? I'm wondering why they left Days Gone out. I'm wondering if it's canceled. It's not. They were just talking they were about just, it. Yeah, they had like a big thing about it the other day. June 11. Um, <laughs> Did they? Wait, what? Like they had like a news blurb <laughs> I saw it somewhere out there where they were showing gameplay or something. Meaning that they s- <laughs> Let's put it this way. I think they are probably saying these are their four big tiles because this is a terrible. They're but probably but coming. Listen. <sighs> okay. Um, what's the one? Uh, June 11. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Let's see. Where is it? Ghost of Sushishishi? Mm-hmm. Sushima? Sushima? Good lord. That's my bad. Sushima? Why would you feature that one over Days Gone? Maybe because you're actually going to show it off for the first time in a way that, like, Go ahead. You, have a, you showed off Days Gone last year. Everybody's wondering about Days Gone more so than Sushima. Yeah, but it's Sucker Punch. He just Googled that. He didn't yeah. know that beforehand. I mean, come on. 
I d- I've kept in the dark. Of it this, looks so pretty I'm cool. I'm interested to see what this game is. If so. you Google it, no, me too. Don't, yeah. I know, don't get me wrong, but uh, I've been people waiting aren't for a Sucker Punch for game. For uh, that's Infamous. That's that studio. Yeah, okay. and Infamous so, too. Yeah. What did Sucker Punch recently do? Infamous too. No, they did First Light. <laughs> That too. I think that's the last thing they did. Mm, technically. So that's why everyone's like, oh, they're doing something different. And so I always go, I, I always off, I, I confuse Sucker Punch and Insomniac yeah. all the time. I think Days Gone will, I wouldn't be surprised that shows up at GDC. Or not GDC, um, Gamescom. That would be a good place for it. Or the PlayStation Experience. They're probably going to show it off if it's on not a, coming this year. They're going to show it off on the uh, PS5. Oh, because it's game delayed. Spoilers. Uh, Shadow of Tomb Raider budget. EDOS Montreal has revealed Shadow of the Tomb Raider will be costing between $75 million and $100 million to develop with an extra $35 million for marketing. There's definitely a pressure, said David Anfossi, <laughs> uh, EDOS Montreal boss. Quote, we cannot avoid it. But at the same time, for us to have the incubation or these incubation projects and to try small things, that gives us an opportunity to test, prepare, and secure some stuff and remove some risk. That's what she said. I almost left this Shh. off because is that my car? It was a you're being robbed. It was a quote that lacked. It was. It's not. It's already off the alarm. Yeah, because they cut it off. <laughs> Keep talking. Yeah, there's no one out there. You know, when people rob people here, they do it at like five o'clock in the afternoon. Get out of my car, dude. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, continue, John. I'm okay. No, it was, I almost left it off because the quote left. We're good. Little, nobody cares. (laughs) (laughs) Left little context because it's like these incubation projects. What was he talking about? Uh, mm-hmm. Projects that needed uh, things be- they do like like the yeah, mobile games and sure, small things. But it's like you don't give that context. You just give a quote where he says that offhand. So I almost left the stupid thing off because it was like, well, no, that's on you, John. Yeah, that's on the news team. I mean, what do you want from us? Yeah, we're just over here. I'm, I'm, I'm just up, the host that reads it. Do you want us to put up or shut up? I'm Ron Burgundy. At Is this that what point. you want? I don't know how these things get here. I just want to know about the Overwatch anniversary. Uh, uh, Valve. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you skipped Valve. Ouch. He could have helped you out and said that and then go back to Valve, but he didn't. This is actually pretty big right here. Uh, Valve's free app. Valve has announced that two free mobile apps will be will allow you to play any game or video in your Steam vi- library on any supported iOS or Android devices. It will be released the week of May 21st and works similarly. To the physical Steam Link device, it will allow you to run games on your PC that you then stream and play on any device using the app as long as the host is PC. The host what PC is on. connected either to five gigahertz. John's yeah, doing thing. yeah, thanks, John. Uh, it's funny. To a five gigahertz network or plugged in with an Ethernet cable. This is actually really cool. Um, Steam Link's been around for a good little bit now, and like. Even like my TV has uh, the app on it, so it's kind of cool to think like if you wanted to, you could technically play PUBG on your phone, but with a keyboard and mouse, you know, type thing. If if like oh my you God. don't have a screen, we gotta just pause for a minute. I don't know what's going on here. Professionalism. He's got none of it, folks. Um, Overwatch. Professionalism. Is that what we do here? <laughs> On this John's, side of the when, table. When he's, when he's overtired, this is what we get. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch anniversary. The 2018 Overwatch oh, anniversary yeah. celebration begins on May 22nd. Overwatch's team announced the event on Twitter. Yeah, they did. Revealing bras and cosmetics from the past will make a return to the event. Bras? Wait, bras? Brawls. <laughs> bras. Can you really get that? I mean, all? I'm sure, I'm sure the females will have their own distinct bras too. Can you do, can you do the alls for me? Owls. There you go. Revealing bras. <laughs> bras. It's a bras. <laughs> and cosmetics. Suck, bra. <laughs> uh, finally this week. <laughs> finally this week. Um, so, list, I, I sent this to John. And he begrudgingly put it in. Really? Did you yeah. even have to ask me? Well, I mean, we have an agreement, but... I look. Are they don't talking, know that. Are you talking about the? Game, <laughs> I'm setting this up. Are you talking about the GameStop CEO that resigned? Well, that apparently <laughs> didn't make the list, and I forgot he, it. Yeah, it wasn't intentional. Yeah. 
He says that every week. Yeah, he? he does. He sends he's, things. He's oh, effing week, terrible. Yeah, he is the worst. Hey, how you doing, John? Hey. <laughs> really appreciate you. Can't wait to um, eat a chicken sandwich with you. Yeah. yeah. Companies. It. This list came out. These are the companies that made the most money off video games last year. I thought. I just thought this was an in, interesting one because Tencent makes apparently almost double of the second place person yeah. uh, at 18 nobody points. Knows that nobody they're probably ch- knows who they are. Yeah, they're like a Chinese developer who does a lot of mobile stuff and things like that. Isn't this the one that got sued by PUBG? I think so. So Lisa apparently Hayden. they're doing good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sony was second at $10.5 billion, Apple at $8 billion, which is kind of crazy too. Just like the Apple store apparently gets them $8 billion. <laughs> and then Microsoft at seven point one. Activision 6.5. We'll skip down to EA 5.1. Nintendo is at 3.6 and Bandai Namco at 2.4. I think it's safe to now say again. that our industry is uh, doing pretty dang good right now, healthy yeah. wise. If you missed what Chris said, that was the money made from video games. Just the from top, sales. The top 10 video game companies in the world make more amazing. than the bottom. 90% of all video game developers. That is not something we should sustain in this country. Chris, do you, feel, do you feel the burn? Do you feel it? I feel it in my pants. Wait, that's Take something else. Selling. Overrated. You this guys... is not a sustainable system. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, you fell off well, on awesome that second one. But yeah. You got heavy um, in the tongue. <laughs> my tongue did get a little thick. They got a little thick on that one. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> no one <laughs> You guys uh, want to wrap this up? Hey, uh, never. never. Emails. Electronic. I'm calling him out because he was late on that. I was not late. I was letting it build and be right. You were checking your phone, then you went. They don't have to know that, you stupid mother. Well, they want video, so I'm showing them why we can't have video. <laughs> Jesus. I'm kidding. I love you. Did you send us an email? Oh, yeah, that's for myself, just so I I was looking at things today. <laughs> and our like, first email is from Chris. <laughs> from uh, First from up. Clockered. <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is actually no. really good. Uh, Scott writes in, says, Guten Tag, my brother. Hey, Guten Tag. Right? Yeah. So I finally finished hey, that the main... means good day, my friend. Mm. Or brother is like my brother. You're a German? Yeah. I know that. Guten Morgen is good morning. I have to kill you now. Nine <laughs> is no. <laughs> uh, so I finally finished the main story of God of War. Just, wow. Right? Wow. Went back and listened to your spoiler cast of the same, and I'm in complete agreement of what was said. Game of the year thus far, no question. Mm. Mm, smart man. Kind of if like, you say Moss is game of the year. <laughs> well, you okay. said freaking Celeste was like number two. But as soon as this She's rolled in, I said, baby, Celeste can get the. Baby. I told I told her to get the out of there. There you go. Because Kratos was here. Uh, in related God of War news, I managed to get a response from Christopher Judge on Twitter. What? That is pretty awesome right there. Yeah, Christopher Judge, John, is the uh, voice of Kratos in God of War. Yeah, he actually uh, he this bleeds into the Twitter <laughs> to the Twitter news. I was going to mention that, but now he's mentioning it. So there that is. Um, and he was, oh, I guess he responded to one of his boy jokes. Uh, and I'm pretty much content with my online presence for the week. Not that John would care about such things. This is true. He doesn't care about you, John or Scott at all. Doesn't care one bit. Uh, I was inspired a few weeks ago when people were sending out ideas of what they thought the three of you look like. Instead of opining your various uh, Im- imaginary physical tributes, godlike as I'm sure as they may be, <laughs> you might want to lower it. Um, I thought I'd take a stab at casting you guys as archetypes in one of my all time favorite shows, Parks and Recreation. Parks Here it goes, Rex. Chris Ron Swanson. You know, I thought about this, like, because I read this email earlier this week. And I was like, I kind of get why he says this, but I actually think John's more Ron Swanson than I am. Um, well, but anyways. We, we, I don't think we're kind of our, our personas on the podcast. They're kind of like we are. But, yeah. Yeah. But if like, they only knew when the I mics were off. 
after reading it, I understood why he did this. But anyways, he says the uh, oh look the a clock. <laughs> we don't have that in America. Yeah. Uh, the I don't get it. ostensible <laughs> leader of the group, who is 100% sent in his opinions and convinced of the correctness of the same, uh, has difficulty masking his frustration when people around him don't rise to his expected level, but deep inside harbors a deep and abiding affection for colleagues that he hides behind an aloof facade. Facade, you facade. dumb, um, stupid son of a... <laughs> also likely a fan of good scotch and burned meat. If you replace beer with scotch, you'd probably be accurate on that regard. Um... Besides that, I don't know. Sean, he didn't spell it right. Nope. Scott Wolf, Fail. Yeah. Hashtag Scott. But you apologized in advance. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And you're well. Yeah, I'll take it. Tom oh. Haverford, the undeniable life of the party. Sean doesn't let things get him down. Fun and vicious. Always on the lookout for the next great side hustle. Sean yeah. doesn't like to be tied down to something he views as boring and pointless. I don't know why you're still here. Um, <laughs> while the others may see him as a bit flighty from time to time, Sean is an insanely hard worker. But no, this uh, is when accurate. he's passionate yes. about something and his sense for the theatrical flair and showmanship is second to none. He's also an amazing loyal friend to those who have earned the, his regard. Yeah. No, um, this is true. He nailed like that's, that's somewhere somewhere all your friends right like, now are but just I going am bull. <laughs> but I am loyal. But uh, I am Chris. Also <laughs> Six months. Uh, also, he probably designs offbeat dope as hell fragrances in his spare time. That's accurate. Yeah. You do do that. It's Panther. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Ben Wyatt or Ben Wyatt. So, I, I told. You're so I was, dumb. You've never watched the show, have you? Right. No, but you're dumb. Uh, John has. So I, I asked him who he thought he never would have guessed. John's biggest fear was that he was going to be cast as Le- Leslie Note. That was his biggest fear to me. <laughs> and I laughed. I was like, hmm. But anyways, this was the easiest one to cast. John is likely smarter than everyone. Nope. Uh, and likely has trouble understanding why people love little Sebastian or sports as much as they do. Yep. Uh, but Gamely plays along to avoid the awkward conversation. An unapologetic nerd who will wax loquaciously or look. Loquacious. Loquacious. You on- stupid. <laughs> I'm the smartest man in the room. <laughs> I'm the fun who gets to read it. Uh, who plays along to avoid... Or wait, no, wait, sorry. Uh, on the relative strengths and weakness of his passions and probably writes borderline erotic Star Trek yes, The Next Generation. Yes. That is accurate. Uh, fan fiction in his spare time. John is incredibly capable. Uh, the oil that keeps the machine running. And will always, always feel underappreciated for his efforts. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the truth. Because he's vain. Like, I could literally take the man to get a steak and be like, here's a hundred bucks. John, you did a great job. And he'd be like, why don't you appreciate it? And then he'd be like, I did do a great job, didn't I? Yeah. Like, yeah. He'd be like, yes, hey, John. Hey, ego, calm down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's Deanna Troy doing this week yeah. behind the curtain? <laughs> Check in next week with... Star Trek After Dark. <laughs> but he secretly loves being part of the team, working with no. people he comes to genuinely love and respect. No. He does love and respect me, Chris. No. Yeah, he, yeah, he hates me. All done with the utmost love and affection, fellas. Please don't stop giving me my weekly dose of unfiltered. Never. Drama. Game on. Game on, Scott. That, that was, was awesome. That was awesome. I love yes. that, actually. I was like thinking about it. I, I still say... To me, John is closer. Like, I think if you put John and I together, you do get Ron Swanson. That's Ron Swanson. Because you you take my sports. So I absolutely would hate Ron Swanson. <laughs> no, you'd love him. <laughs> like, you take my sports, my love for me, my no, love no, no. for that's, a beer. That, that didn't provoke me. I'm just, oh. have you not seen the show? No. Ever? You really need to oh, watch man. that show. I, it's I, terrific. It's on my w- to watch list for sure. My just fa- skip it, the I first loved, season. Why? Why? I wouldn't say skip it, but just. Power no, through it. Power through it. It it's gets a, way better. It's a rare show that after, I would say, the first two seasons especially, really, for sure, the first, but definitely after the second season, it like got a 100 times better because it made some casting changes but and kind of changed Not the just that. Because you're watching the first season going, this is trying to be The Office way too much. Yes, yes. But then it, start, it, it started doing its own thing. The Office was like amazing until I saw. Uh, Ricky yes. Gervais' Office was better than the American version. I disagree. That's, that's probably fair. I disagree. I agree with you on that. <laughs> oh, look, I'm British and cheeky. And hilarious. Well, I mean, remember, he only did like 20 See, episodes. You were like 10 times funnier just then. And everything from the first season <laughs> is kind of a rip of the first season. Of exactly. The in Britain. Um, anyways. Oh, wait. That's not the that's one. That's your that's stuff me. that you yeah. sent to us. Um, Daniel. 
<clears throat> writes in pretty short. He says, Hey guys, I attached a drawing for my concept of animated shorts. Daniel said he wants to uh, do some animated videos of us. And he says, I'm so tired. So yeah, game on next week. I'll have a longer email. Please put that to Twitter. But, uh, Chris. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like that. Let's just say, um, John, doesn't, Sean, Sean's actually kind of accurate, but John doesn't John, say nine, nine, nine. No, no. And I have a beard and <laughs> I would like that be drawn. So bring the nine, nine, nine to me. I like how they got Rick and Morty lips. Yeah, the the WTF can stay in the middle because Chris and I do WTF each other when it comes to John. Pretty much. That's what John looks like on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and who's this person down here? Uh, that's Daniel actually oh. listening to us. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> WTF, John, are you insane? <laughs> on that's Wednesday. him Wednesday. Because on Monday, that's us. And then on Wednesday, that's... It's definitely not Tuesday. Wait. It's not Tuesday today. Oh. It's I, not Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Um, you know what? I never actually said this, so I should say that now. If you want to be like Daniel and Scott, you can write those thoughts in to weeklygameschat at gmail.com, and you'll have your thoughts and opinion read on the air, even if you want to compare us to characters we are not. If someone wants to compare us to office characters, community characters, Rick and Morty characters, feel free. I'll take it. Uh, but we are also on Twitter. Yeah. At uh, Weekly Games Chat. So, uh, what was that? What was hey, that? Weekly Games Chat. That's why Tom Brokaw. Oh, probably shouldn't bring him up, huh? Yeah, yeah, Ooh, no, no. Stay away oh, from yeah. the Tom Brokaw <laughs> jokes right now, people. <laughs> um, you could be just like uh, our boy at Tyranna Tortoise. Um, he said, <laughs> "That's all." You always laugh when I say his I name. I love that name. He says at Weekly Games Chat, guys, you have. This is what I was talking about earlier. To set up a Twitch channel and get Sean to play Resident Evil 7 VR. Technically, we have a Twitch channel. He says, I don't care who's Richard I need to touch to make this happen. <laughs> Hashtag game on. So we'll see. And then who did I say it was uh, your yeah, boy all sorts of stuff. about asking us about our lunch? What was his name? Oh, Chapman Max wrote in and said, yeah. uh, caught up with last week's episode yesterday. I'm very concerned with your lunch eating habits. I hearted that. For what you. Was it? But we no. had a chicken sandwich last week. We did, and it yeah. was it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, or maybe yeah, because you went to BK. He was concerned by the fact you guys went to a terrible place. Well, I wonder if he thinks he went to a terrible place Can or a healthy Aspies? place. I don't know, but we ate, we ate Burger King again today. Yeah, it wasn't Ugh. so great. Shout out to same place too. J Single Heart Eight Seven, who's a husband, father, and Boston sports enthusiast. Happy after that game one victory, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks yeah. for the follow. Following you back. That was good. At yeah, edge case underscore SE. You now have two people following you because we just followed you back. Thank you for the follow. And Dan Demand 5785. Thank you so much for the follow. Following you back. If you want to be like any of those I just mentioned, you can find us on the Twitter at Weekly Games Chat. And there was something that Chris just pointed out <laughs> that I may have said about him on the Twitter. Um, so David underscore McClendon says at Weekly Games Chat, guys, you've got to share the joy. What, what's the Lord of the Rings video that caused John to laugh out a kidney on this week's episode? Oh, dang it. Also love the I topic. I shared it, didn't I? You did. Yeah. You did. Um, also love the topic this week. Had zero interest in VR to you guys. Spent a show on it. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag. You're right. You're right. That's how you do it. Spin why. <laughs> I, that's how we officially spell your wife now. Yeah, and that's Everybody how we're gonna when we print our shirts for spin a while. That's what we're gonna say. We're so shirts. I I I told uh, David I thought we had it up, and I swear if Chris took it down, I was gonna karate kick him in the throat. Basically, David, I I always have it up. He did have it up. My it, Richard never goes down. It was an immigrant link. Um. So then I did I'm share that. So you could you should be able to see that on what we did. Like I put it out there for everybody. To it's see. there if you if you search for it. Yeah. Uh, he also said he lost both his kidneys from laughing. Thanks, guys. Yeah. He said a lot. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's good. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Chris. We're good. Yeah. Remember how I was, I was done? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, if you want, you can subscribe to us on. I already said that. You, I said it cool though. I said, yeah, we're on Twitter and follow us at Weekly Game Chat. I was going to say, say you're going to say you Facebook? like the show. <laughs> I hate you can Chris subscribe to us so on bad. iTunes or whatever podcast service. You know, like literally what I've said for about 140 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can sc- subscribe to us on iTunes or whatever podcast service you 
want to use and you will get a new episode every Wednesday. If you like the show, make sure you drop a five star rating or write a review. If you hate the show, you can give us Oh my god. Thanks. Thanks. Man, okay. He gives me a look like yeah. it's my fault that he yeah. was making noise with keys. Yeah. He's and like the nerve there. of me to to point that out during a recording. I need to bring Jeff in to like John. To be the John. father to John. John. For these things. John. Just, yeah. <laughs> But anyways, um, if you hate the show, drop us a four star rating because that's four is bad, <laughs> right? Did you, four, just, you know, you already get five because you like it, or you get four stars. Did you just tell people to four stars if they hate us. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the only acceptable reason. <laughs> um, you guys want to go eat some Burger King? We're not going to oh. Burger. Yeah. Oh, BK Zaxby's BK Lounge then. <laughs> um. Until next time. Wait, is it? Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Oh, man. You should have been listening. <laughs> See how I took I, that back on you? I have headphones on. I know. I what? don't. I have no excuse. I'm you know, this was actually liberating today. I'm, what is What was that word you just said? Liberating. You didn't say that the first time. You realized that, right? I said liberating. You said liberating. <laughs> you know this is liberating, right? Liberating. I was like, I think he meant to say it was liberating liberating. Right. I have on headphones. Anyways. Sure, right. um, until what he said was liberating. Liberating. <laughs> Liberate it. Liberate. Liberate. <laughs> Double it. Um, Take it in half. Until it. next time. Hey, uh, I won't be here next week. Yeah, you won't. Thank Wait. God. Wait, what? I said that out loud. I will literally. I'll miss you, Chris. Just yeah, I'll that. miss you, too. <laughs> Y'all want um, me to bring anything back from Disney World? Yeah, Disney. <laughs> like, Walt? All. <laughs> yeah, if you could bring the good look, his hair. Do I? Do I? <laughs> last week or last time John went, he brought us back some cool hats. I still have my hat. They're like twenty nine dollar hats. So he spent like sixty dollars on us. It's pretty accurate, right, John? And yeah. He, he do you wants, want anything? He's like, I don't want anything. You, you got, know, but you I know want how, your praise. You know how when the when the when the Berlin Wall came down, people saved pieces of the wall. Mm-hmm. Save me a piece of uh, it's a small world. Oh yeah! Bring back a bring back a brick. Wait, bring do, do bring I me an avatar. That down? Yeah, they're turning it down. What? They're replacing it with. Um, it's a big world. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, something to do with Tangled. They're they're. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, that. If if you're familiar with Walt Disney World, that's really close. Her tower's right next to that ride, so that makes sense. Bring me back um, Avatar. I'm gonna um see what I can do about that, Chris. The whole thing. <laughs> I want to be able to use the pony hair thing to do the thing. <laughs> I remember see, that John part. Avatar was. <laughs> if you see a Black Panther pop, mm-hmm. ooh, which one do you want? Because they're th- just the one that's. I think. I think one that's either in full costume or without, costume without the head. Yeah, Aiden. Or, yeah. Aiden, Aiden wants a Black Panther pop. Cool. I um, think they have that at. Uh, I don't know. I they they, they had one. them. Yeah. I bought two for um, a lady at work whose whose son was in the movie. So, uh huh. Yeah. Fun fact. But yeah. Okay. Speaking of wrapping up. Okay. <laughs> uh, until next time, I will simply say game on, Sean. Game on, Chris. Game on, John. Game on, Chris. Game on, Sean. Game on, John. Your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. Ah, oh, the life of a thug.